Hello everyone, it's uh, Chris from 19 Stone Ninjas. As you can see, I've got my camera on this time. Uh, I had a few problems before trying to get it working, so that's why I've only you know, really got it working this time. Um, this is a quick devlog update. I uh, haven't got loads of stuff to report. We are currently kind of, we're still working through workflow issues. We've had a few, some of the mem members of the team have had a few computer problems and things like that. So we've been um, trying to get things from the asset team, the modeling and the texturing, and get them into the game itself, including audio and things like that. We've also had issues with uh, a few team members leaving, things like that, and people going on holiday because it's that time of year. Um, yeah, mostly, I mean, I've been focusing on, as I said, I think in the last video, I've been focusing on AI. Um, it is a whole a world of, of, of pain, I would say. It's very different from... Um, uh, from other types of programming, I, I mean, I'm I'm actually using a, a an engine uh, within Unity. Sorry, I'm using a, a an asset within Unity called Rain. Uh, at the moment, at least, anyway, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be appropriate for my needs. I mean, it's got a lot in it, but I just I'll be honest with you, I'm struggling to work some of the some of the things out in it, like the behavior tree system and how the how all the nodes execute and return and in what order and things like that. I'm not sure if there's problems with the system or it's just me like struggling to understand it. Um, but yeah, so far, I mean, so far, for example, in terms of the uh, the AI, I have this uh, little character dude. As you've, if anyone ever has used Unity, you will have already seen him. Um, and I've got two waypoint networks set up. Now, the standard behaviour within the Rain engine is you have uh, two types of waypoint networks well sorry two two types of waypoints you've got a waypoint network and a waypoint patrol and a patrol you can ping pong around it or you can just send person uh, someone in a particular direction but if you override all that all the default behavior and you um you write custom actions you can do more elaborate stuff with the with the routes what i've got is a waypoint network and as you might be able to see from the uh, from the these are the waypoints that the the ai will navigate to and um, the the default behavior within uh, within rain is is to kind of wander around not not actually onto the network points uh, and make decisions based on them it's kind of just a, ra a random wander around the area that's what all of the tutorials kind of point you towards um, but I want what I wanted is I wanted to, uh, the the AI to reach a point and then make a decision which path they would go down like a random choice. So that's what I've done. I've written a custom behavior that uh, uh, that de deals with that. So if I just watch, we just play it. Another thing as well that each AI character will pick up the in you know the the network uh, closest to them. So if you set a guard here, they will pick up the network point closest to them at the very beginning. Um, it's not very great. It's not very good um, on this particular network because this is uh, it's not very dynamic. Let me just speed him up a little bit. And of course, I can't do it like that. There we go. So you see, he randomly makes decisions. Uh, he he won't go back on himself. That was one of the problems I had originally. They had you you reached a waypoint, and then it can, got all the connected waypoints, and then made a decision as to where to to go from there. Um, I think I've also got a run in there, yeah. So we've got much faster as well. So he'll just do that randomly forever and a day until he sees the character. Now at the moment, when he sees a character, all kinds of crazy things are happening. I'll show you just for the fun, but. Uh, it's uh, it's not not brilliant at the moment. See now he runs towards me, stops, and that's what I wanted him to do at the moment. He's actually going to attack you. Um, all AI is going to be melee based at the moment. There may be weapons involved later on, um, but for the time being, we're just going to have melee. And then he doesn't move again. I think he might eventually move in a little bit, but the um, behavior tree is kind of stuck. It's stuck in the detected state, whereas I don't, I don't know why it's doing it, and I'm I'm just getting more and more confused the more I play around with it. So I'm trying to I'm going to have to start speaking to the rain guys, I think, and 
figuring out what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing wrong, because I'm wasting so much time doing doing this at the moment that I'm not spending time on lots of the you know many of the other things that I need to do at the moment. Anyway, just to demonstrate that uh, the fact that I don't have to configure anything on the AI uh, to get them to go around a, a waypoint network. These large circles are just me playing around with uh, the scale on it. They don't actually do anything, I don't think, at the moment. Um, but he should now detect this network, get the closest waypoint, start on this network, and then run around it as per before. Let's give him a run again. I have had a few prot times when he's, he's just not known what to do when he gets to a network. You know, walking around around trees. Now he's probably just going to randomise himself around here for a little bit. And then, he, you know, I don't know how much chance he's got to go back to, go back to there, but <clears throat> one in three, it's just a random calculation. There you go, he's going straight back. That means he'll now run off in another direction and probably won't come back to here for a bit. So yeah, it's going to allow us to create quite um, uh, dynamic behaviour from the AI. It's going to allow us to create a, a more uh, realistic world, hopefully. Now there is a little bit of a bug, as you see over here. I occasionally see this. It gets confused on this particular waypoint. Um, and he, and he, if you walk in, for example, he'll just walk into this wall forever. But it's this waypoint here, and it's waypoint one. Um, index one, and I don't understand why he does. He, he sometimes like he might he might want to go down this way, but he'll he'll run off this way and he'll just walk into the wall. And I don't know if again if that's a rain a bug within rain or it's something I'm doing somewhere, but it's only there that I've noticed it at least yet yeah, anyway. But yeah, as you can see, I've got a load of mocap data and oh, that's the wrong uh, wrong thing to focus on. Sorry there. <clears throat> So I've got a load of more cap data, and I'm uh, uh, I've been cleaning it up and getting loops in place. There you go. It's the same one again. It's, it's waypoint one, and he's just walking into the wall near it. It makes no sense. There's a ma the 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 mesh the nav grid around it is uh, is fine. Let's find it. Navigation mesh. When it looks okay. He can get through there, and that's much smaller. So I don't understand why he can't get through there. But he does sometimes, like he just did. Then it's 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 crazy. I, I don't. I'm going to have to speak to someone. Um, so yeah, that's the basic behavior for the AI so far. There's so much more involved. The AI is going to be intelligent enough to um, to use the network devices in the game. So one of the main elements that we've been discussing with Subnet is how do we how do we make this fun? Um, how do we make it a little bit more interesting in terms of um, the, the the environment interaction? Now, at the moment, obviously, we've got the network devices. If you've seen any of the other videos, the the other videos are covering uh, how the networking works, how the parkour works, and I've explained a few of the features that we're going to put into the game, like rooftop chases for the parkour, and uh, you, there's going to be puzzles that that uh, are built into the the networking interface that I've set up. Um, but the AI needs to also use that in order for it to be a realistic world. So say, for example, you uh, lock someone in a, in a lift and you send it down a floor and you lock that door so they can't actually get out of it. And they can't hack it from the inside or they can't use it from the inside because they haven't got the right access or something to that effect. Then another AI may come along and go, oh, I can see someone stuck in there, let's, let's go and let them out with that terminal. So that might distract that AI for a while. Other than that, they'll be chasing you and they'll be you know, trying to trying to kill you or, or or whatever. I don't know if I'm going to have some kind of um, some kind of retry system once you get found or not because it's a stealth based game. Uh, that is going to be the main focus of it. There's not going to be any shooting or killing, but there is a lot of different types of stealth involved in the game. So I'm still making decisions on that, but it shouldn't really affect what's already in the game, what we've already done. I'm trying to work around it, if that makes sense. Um, it's, it's a strange situation to be in because you're, you're kind of already, we've already designed the game, but we're always tweaking and we're always redesigning things to make it easier for us all. It's not because we don't want the features, it's because the amount of amount of effort that's involved in some of them. I mean, it's like we've made a decision to use animation for, for, you know, for NPCs. That adds so much production onto the game because we've got to animate every single 
um, every single movement, every single transition between the movements. Uh, I mean, Mechanim within Unity has a, a blend system, which is brilliant, but you still have to do the tweaking. You still have to manage it. To get this guy running around and make a blend tree that is relevant, uh, let me show you this. Uh, I've been using a few tutorials, but I've also been using my own, uh, uh, a lot of my own stuff. Um, this doesn't quite work yet, but is this at the moment? Look, the, the guards are going to stop when uh, they're going to randomly stop as well when they reach each of these destinations. Um, makes it again a little bit more realistic, like they're actually patrolling and they're kind of idle and they don't know what to do. But on top of that, there's also uh, uh, an agitation level, and the agitation level. If we play this animation here, we've got someone who's standing very, very still. That's, that's basically the loop. At the moment, the best I could get from the raw mocap data that Unity provides, uh, which is the only free stuff I could find at the moment until we get an animator, is so the more agitated he is, the more he'll move around and look, you know, look around a little bit, and it's it's just a little bit more. But hopefully, that'll be a bit more. Um, bit more obvious when we we get proper animations in there we've also got little variations for the idle movement we've got the um, got him just moving his arm uh, that's not the wrong value that's the wrong value sorry that that should be two and two he um, just kind of scratches the back of his head. Three, I think he just looks around. Yeah, moves his head. Now that move head thing, I'm actually using for a suspicious mode as well at the moment. So when the anim when the enemies become suspicious after they've seen you and you hide, or after they've seen you, they're going to kind of wait around for a little bit, look around, and their field of vision is going to follow that. In fact, you can see that as I uh, uh, as I walk around. Let me just find the guy again. Here he is and uh, a lot of my things are off screen now because I've uh, I have got I said I've got all this over here it's um it's getting quite complicated the amount of things that are going on within the the engine uh so what was I talking about getting right, I'm going to show you his his corner vision again if any of you have used rain before you'll already see, you'll already have seen this but we've got a, a sensor that that is his field of vision. Obviously, he needs line of sight as well before you can actually see him. But if we play, you'll see it's not just static. It's moving around slightly. It's actually hooked to his head. Um, so if you see when I... You may see this. I can actually get him to see me. Uh, he's not detecting me at all now. Anyway, when he's in a suspicious mode, which he's not right now for some reason, uh, he... Um, there we go. You see he moves his head around quite a lot. So that's more likely that he'll see me, uh, etc. But that again, that will be more randomised at some point. Um, you may have already noticed as well, um, Byron himself also has a model on him, a very, very basic model. Um, he bobs up and down randomly at the moment too and um, that's the, actually the, the head bob it's the camera moving not the model the model is stuck in place but uh, again I'm using um, something called UFPS which many of you guys will probably already have seen or heard from another video at least but um, we're going to be modeling the entire of his front so you're going to be able to see his legs his arms we're going to be able to see ledge grabbing we're going to be able to see um, there's a few little things that I'm not going to reveal yet that he's going to be able to use, you know, use on himself that you will you'll see the animations happening. Um, yeah, so there's there's quite a lot of I mean, uh, what Burton is currently in the process of um, making the character look nice, um, or rather, he's he's in the process of designing the character. Um, if you've seen any of the concept out on the website, there there's plenty on there shows you what the character should look like but we've also got a number of uh, actually it's not even in there it's in here and something like this there we go so this is where this is this is what we've got up to so far there's lots more work to go in it this is all uh, um, all Burton's work 
very happy with it so far it's quite different from the concept art so far but again as we get it further along there's lots of tweaking to do um the feet aren't finished i mean as you can see they're just square you know blocked out at the moment but there's going to be hopefully some quite cool things in there little cool tools on his belt um little pouches and things that are going to going to do things but yeah we're, we've got a lot of a lot of tweaking to do and a lot of um we've had a lot of discussions about it already um but we're getting there and as you see he doesn't have any facial hair or hair or anything at the moment and uh yeah there's uh we're getting there we're getting there with it so that's our that's our progress on the character himself um we've also got i mean eric in the, is in the process of working on some uh some scaffolding very boring but uh we've got this scaffolding which is actually going to go into the office level um again he's got a lot of tweaks to do on this this was just a first pass that he, he passed out to me i'm just going to open up the office scene and quickly show you some bits in there let's get rid of this animator again Now, again, I can't remember for the last video how much I showed. Um, the lighting in this level is terrible at the moment. There's no baking going on or anything like that. So everything flashes a little bit. Um, we've also got concept art on the way for the outside area. Uh, again, I may have I may have mentioned that last time because we've been on with it for a while now. But again, it's one of those things we need to get right. We need to get the feel right, and we need to be able to reuse a lot of it for um, for many other areas because we're, we're taking a shot from this angle. But we're going to need to fill in all of this bit around the back. We're going to need to add, you know, add things into here. There's there's, there's going to be different routes into the building. Um, plenty of security around NPCs, cameras, things like that. There's a lot of work to go yet. Um, but the basic level of the, the basic geometry for the game is blocked out now. There shouldn't really be any um, there shouldn't really be any bugs and issues with the level as it stands. Um, you know, you can parkour around on it. You you can do you can you can hack certain things. There's a few things in the actual building that work, uh, as we've seen the the elevators before they work. Uh, we've still got a lot of a lot of way to go on the art, though, as you can see. But we're slowly getting things into this room. We're slowly lighting it. We're slowly adding in rigid bodies and colliders for for things we've got. Um, these can all be picked up by the player uh, when you're running around now. Again, I think it's quite buggy right now, but I'll just quickly show you. Um, we've also been, as you can, might, you might be able to hear, we've also been getting some custom footsteps into the game. This is a slightly different surface. These are these are directly from Ryan, um, but we've been obviously speaking to try and get the right feel in there. Um, It's only a slight difference between the marble and the concrete. Uh, this is, that's the original UFPS footprint. Uh, footprints, you know, foot, foot uh, steps. But we've also, today I just got through the, the vent sound effects that need a little bit of tweaking before I can get them in the game, but they will hopefully be here and we won't have this horrible uh, moon texture in here still. So I mean, in terms of the actual uh, scene the the demo scene. Unfortunately, not much has been done on it. There's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of background work. I'm still doing a lot of recruiting and, and speaking to people. Um, I'm also um, for people who have who don't follow us on Twitter. I also do um, now hosting uh, or co-hosting rather um, a show called D the Data Mine on MMA uh, uh, on Twitch, hosted by a um, girl, girl called Josie um, who does um it's kind of like an analytical podcast um it, it's developers talking about developer things essentially it's a lot of technical technical mumbo jumbo um but we it's kind of it, the, the the tagline is group therapy for the for the independent developer and it pretty much is it's it's something that um there's a, a another developer on there who was on there who, whose idea it was i believe called danny 
um, and he's just released a game called Light on um, on Steam uh, via Team Seventeen. Uh, the they, they published the game for him, and it, it's it's very cool actually. It's quite it's a stealth game, uh, stealth and hacking. It's very strange. It's it's two D game, but it's a similar kind of concept to Subnet. It's got similar ideas in it. Um, I've had a little play of it, uh, and it, I quite like it so far. I'm just waiting for a bit of time to actually get and get and have a proper go of it. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's pretty good. And Danny, it was Danny's idea to start the podcast. I just sent an email and went on as a guest one week. But I, I don't know, I don't know how it happened. But I'm I'm now helping host the show, and I'm quite enjoying it. It's quite a lot of, uh, uh, it's quite therapeutic to to sit down and talk to other geeks about geeky things, you know. Um. Yeah, so, um, I mean, there's lots of other little things that have been going on that, that I'm not going to go into detail, but generally we're getting there with it. We've got a lot of, um, uh, we've got a lot, long way to go. Uh, we still need uh, an animator. We're, we're currently in the process of recruiting um, or, or speaking to one or two animators. Uh, but as with all things indie, it takes a while to establish if they're going to work well with you or uh, if they if they can do the work, if they're motivated enough to, to get it out, etc. That's all kind of up in the air at the moment. Um, and the same goes for uh, an environment artist. We, we we actually, we're not in the process of recruiting one. We, we want to recruit one. Um, ideally, we need a technical artist or, a, or an environment artist or both to come in and start helping making this world into the concept art that we've got. There's another piece of concept art that I'm actually going to release shortly after this video. I might do it this weekend, actually. Um, that we've we've had for a while now that I've been sitting on. There's another piece coming, and then we're going to get on to um, probably doing the art for the for the guards. We're probably only going to have one type of guard in this particular level, at least for the demo. Uh, the problem is with with each type of guard and each type of behaviour. Um, you've got a whole load of behaviours to program uh, within the AI, so it's yeah each one is just going to take much much longer to do you know i'm already i'm already struggling for time when it comes to doing this one single um guard but um even though i can i can duplicate that guard all over the place and you know customize each one slightly but in terms of you know you've got some guy who has grenades and another guy who has a gun and another guy who has melee uh, a melee weapon they all act differently and they all do different things there might be one that's a team leader that doesn't charge like the rest of them do you know the cut there's all kinds of stuff that you can think about but it's how much can we think about as a as a small team you know uh, big teams that you know program the call of duty for the single player levels and the uh, single player ai or the bots or you know the might um kill zone or things that things that uh, uh, the triple A games essentially they've got teams of hundreds of people that can do this kind of stuff and even though there might be one person who's ultimately responsible for it they've got the resource to be able to say right you sort the animations out you do you do the texturing on the model you do the modeling uh, you come up with the, the AI behaviors and or, or part of the AI behaviors and you do another part of the AI behaviors and it, and it, it, it all kind of gets put together whereas We've got two people, three people that are doing all of that and trying to get a AAA standard. We're not going to get a AAA standard. It's, it's basically that simple. I mean, one, it's th there's a lot of work in it, and two, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of skill involved as well, and it's skill at the moment that we don't have in the team. We've got some of it. We can do a bit of animating. We can do we can do modeling and, and texturing now, but um, and we can get them into the game, but the AI, for example, I said I'm new to it. I'm the only person who, who will do it or can do it on the team. So it's kind of, you know, it's just one of those things that's we're learning as we go, you know. Um, probably not the most professional of things to say, especially when you're releasing a, a, a devlog. But the, you know, this is how this is how we are. Um, hopefully, things are going to be picking up in the next few months. At the moment, with it being July, August, it's summer. Everyone's on holiday. People are moving house. Um, the, to be fair, the whole team at the moment is not is not really doing much as a team, but that will change. I know it will because we've been in good situations in the past and stuff, and we're getting more people on board that are more interested in getting involved in the team. Um, and it's a big thing. The communication part is a big thing with, when it comes to to indie dev. You can't you can't just sit and and procrastinate or, or worry about what other people are doing. You just have to get on with your bit, and it's. 
you know, it's not the most ideal of situations, but I, I, as long as you're motivated, you'll get there eventually. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm. Even though we haven't done much, I'm still quite pleased with what's going on. Um, as I said, this has always been a hobby project for all of us involved. We're not doing it full time, and we're, we're, we're pushing things as far as we can put them. So we, we, we might get a triple A quality protagonist. You know, we might get something that is amazing and does all of the everything that we want it to do. But it might take us a year to get there. You know, we're gonna try and get the minimal things in there for the demo, so we can at least show other people, get feedback, see if it's a fun game, see if people want to see other features. Um, if those features aren't too too difficult or too uh, not difficult, difficult isn't the right word for it. If they aren't too time consuming, I think to um, to implement, we'll, we will go you know we'll go with some suggestions and stuff. But we're still a long way off that. Um, when we have a demo, we want to get a Kickstarter together. When we when we have the Kickstarter, there's going to be a whole raft of other things that happen when that happens and. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a whole. It's it's a long it's a long process, and uh, but I'm in, I'm still enjoying it, even though I might this might be a bit of a down you know down played video for once. It's it's not that I'm not enjoying it. It's that there is a lot to do, and there's there's it feels like there's not enough time, but we have got an infinite amount of time. I imagine as it gets you know as people get more wind of the game, we'll get more questions as to when it's going to be out and. Uh, how you know how likely it is that you're going to have this feature and this feature and is this going to happen and while it's all great to to talk about it actually implementing them every suggestion that everyone comes comes up with is is quite a big task so so yeah um anyway sorry sorry for the the length between updates i'm going to try to do more regular devlogs if not for you guys, like if not for for the public, it's for the team more than anything because because we've got so much to do and because we're I kind of know what's going on with everything, but not everyone on the team knows what's going on with everything. Even though we've got Google Groups, even though we're using email and Skype and talking to each other, there's still a lot of things that just come directly to me that I need to kind of give back to the team and let them know that other people are doing things and let them know that things are going on, etc. Um, I actually did um, the the last MMO buff data mine, um, which was yesterday, yesterday, yes, Thursday, so at one o'clock. Um, th uh, the last data mine I hosted on my own because uh, the the host Josie, she's um, unfortunately got a bit of a bad back, and I uh, I hosted it. But I talked about team management and I talked about remote working and uh, and you know online teams. You know you're not physically in an office. It is quite a challenge in itself. Even if you're not doing it full time, even if you're not paying people a job, you know, to do this. If, if you know, if there was money involved and we, we were all on a wage, then it'd be totally different because we would have we'd be having probably daily meetings just to make sure that we're we've all got things to do and we can all work today. And you know, but we don't need that as it stands because we uh, we have weekly meetings and it you know kind of goes along. Anyway, I feel like I'm starting to waffle a bit now, but um, thanks uh, for listening. Um, Obviously, if you just come across this video and you're still watching, uh, and you're interested in anything we're doing, interested in the game, interested in the uh, in any aspect of it, or maybe even interested in joining the team, um, give us a shout on Twitter. Uh, well, specifically, actually, if you want to if you want to apply for a position, go on the website, read up what's going on on the website. Um, I tend to keep it up to date um, as much as possible, anyway. And there's lots of there's lots of information on there. And there's also information about the roles and the jobs, essentially, that we've we've got for people. So if you're interested, um, even if you haven't got loads of experience, we're still interested in hearing from you. Um, we've got uh, we've got a wide ranging experience. I mean, I, again, before I started game dev, I never touched a game in my life. I'd never written a uh, written a game, so I've learned all of this from from nothing, essentially. Um, and we are patient. It's just that we do need to. We, we want people on the team that are willing to learn and willing to push themselves and kind of willing to if you haven't got the experience you want to get the experience you don't just want it to come to you if you know what I mean um, so yeah we're, we're, we're always we're always interested in, to, in hearing from people um, and I'll always respond on email uh, if it's not immediate it will be hopefully within a you know a few days so yeah uh, give us a drop us an email through the site or just speak to me on Twitter if you want a a quick thing, a quick quick chat. Um, we're on Twitter as at Nineteen Ninjas. We're on um, Facebook uh, forward slash Nineteen Stone Ninjas, I believe. 
and uh, obviously I'm on Twitch as well. At the moment, I'm not doing any development streams, but I am doing uh, I'm doing gamer streams occasionally because I tend to play a few games after I've been hammering work for the day uh, at the moment. And that's bid the dog forward slash bid the dog uh, on Twitch and uh, website www.19stoneninjas.com. Um, check that out. All the links will be posted below or spammed on the screen. So uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for listening, people.